and welcome everybody to the podcast. Uh, this is episode 107. Glad Charles showed me because I would have said 106. <laughs> <laughs> July 26th. And the world is correct because baseball is back. So I'm here to host, uh, and my name is Steve. And Charles, <laughs> you got me confused. I've had a terrible I'll weekend. Be- <laughs> I hate plumbing, yeah, God damn it. Yeah, Anyways. You got me all confused. All right. I'm right your host, Steve. I'm trying by. to do like five yeah. things. You're rolling. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm here. I'm in a better mood than you. <laughs> yes. I don't know I'll be in a better mood on. once I get that apple pie Kit Kat Holy in my mouth. Yeah. And BV, how you doing? I'm good. Um, <laughs> apparently also better than you right now. Yeah, yeah. Nothing gets anybody in a good mood besides plumbing. I mean, plumbing makes everyone happy. I don't know how Charles does it for a living. But anyways, we're going to talk about some things. We're going to have a review on view crime. We're going to have an apple pie Kit Kat. We're going to have some more Brock Meyer season two and a lot more stuff. Uh, so I want to sit back and jack <laughs> sit back and jack off. No, sit back and sit relax. Back, take your pants off. Yeah, enjoy yeah, them. Yes. And the show. Uh, and have a, a good time. All right. So at least then you guys don't have to take a shower at your father's house. No. no? Okay. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So first up on the docket. Now <laughs> on the docket. <laughs> I don't know what's going. Maybe we're oh, a dumpster man. fire. <laughs> I got. I, I need some therapy right Steve, now. I'm telling you, man. Uh, Steve is a trainer. Yeah. Oh, so okay. we all know the social justice stuff is going on right now, and NASCAR banned the Confederate flag. Correct. Yeah, we've covered that before on the podcast, and Bubba Wallace asked for it, and rightfully so. I mean, let's be honest: uh, the Confederate flag is a little racist. And a little, a little racist. Like a little, to, just got a touch of racism, ever so slightly. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of racism yeah. to it, and uh, there's no need for it. Well, NASCAR, oh NASCAR, does not lose. Yeah. lose. Now, not NASCAR, the uh, the sport the itself, the sport itself, the, the, the fans, fans who uh, oh, frequent their events. Yes. Are insane. Yeah. Is the moral. So of apparently they're booing Bubba Wallace everywhere he shows up now, and then when he wrecks, they cheer. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, I don't know. So man. NASCAR fans are going to take a little longer to come around. I think. Uh, is just, anyone? I'll be honest with you. Is anyone shocked by this revelation? <laughs> no, I don't no. think. BV, do you find this to be shocking? No, I mean uh, I haven't uh, heard about you know less you know abrasive NASCAR fan activity since. Uh, Juan Pablo Montoya went on to the uh, under the circuit a few years ago, and you know, no, no surprise, he's a minority. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a real racer? I thought yeah. you just made up that name. I don't, it sounded don't like know. a little feral character. Yeah, yeah did it? <laughs> oh no, he's a real character. He's a real, uh, real driver. Real character. character. <laughs> all right, so NASCAR is going to take them a while to come around, but now this week, for all you f- baseball fans, baseball has come back. A few funny stories from that. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but they're pumping in crowd noises. Oh, they are? Yeah, on the are. broadcast or into the stadium? Yeah, I, I turned on TBS today. It was the Nationals versus somebody, and it hit the ball in the air. Uh, the Nationals were in the outfield, and the crowd went, oh. And then when they caught it, they were like, hey. So that's just on the broadcast, though? Yeah. Well, I think it's on radio and on TV they're doing that. Okay, but, but not into the stadium itself. Yeah, no, no. They just play it over on the broadcast. Uh, Does so. it need that? I don't know. I guess. Well, it's I weird because you hear the crowd, but then they show the pitcher about and all the empty seats behind yeah. it. So, and there's baseball is a boring sport to begin with. Yeah, you so know, you gotta spice it up somehow. Yeah, so. Now, the other thing some teams are doing, you can pay them uh, anywhere from fifty to one hundred fifty dollars if you're a season ticket holder, and take a picture of yourself, and they do a cardboard cut out of you, cut out of you, and put you in the stadium. Uh, so, someone's paying one hundred fifty dollars yes. to have and, a cardboard cutout of themselves. Yes. Placed into an empty stadium. Yes, I knew that. I saw it on the Dodgers game. I saw the people have the way too much FU money in America. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a funny one. It, it relates to Bill. I don't know if he's heard this down there. It was either yeah. the Cubs or the White Sox. I don't know. It which. was the Cubs. Cubs. One guy bought a whole section of just him, uh, <laughs> like a thousand of them, yeah. just him at fifty bucks a piece. You do the math. Jesus. Uh, that's a lot and, of money. And I guess to burn. he's yelling. He's yelling. You saw yeah, it. Yeah. A picture of him yelling out at something. And yeah. Yeah. So one whole section of this thing is just one guy's cut out just doing the same Jeez. thing. So they're trying different things to get people involved and collect more. Have money you from watched it. any of the empty? You said you watched a little bit of it. Yeah. Like five minutes. I watched <laughs> one of baseball TV. Because I was brutal. curious. I was like, let's see it. And then when they show that picture, that camera angle from behind the pitcher, to, you know, when he's pitching. Yeah. And you just see all those empty seats. It's like, Ah, never mind. <laughs> they turned this off. Uh, I, I, don't know. I, I don't know, man. I. <laughs> well, to be honest, in my defense, if if they didn't have empty seats, I'd be ah, never mind. I turned it off anyways. Yeah. But uh, so and also so next week on top of this, you're going to have basketball. Basketball is going to be back. Yeah, I saw that. And Charles Barkley is predicting that the Portland. Uh, tr- 
what is Portland's team? Bills Trailblazers? Trailblazers? Trailblazers. Yeah. Trailblazers. Yes. That they're going to be hard to beat, and they might upset everybody. So watch out for Portland. According to Charles Barkley, I don't know. I don't follow very well. I think basketball will translate better than baseball because basketball crowds. They can do something about them squeaks, though. Uh, no crowd. How loud are them squeaks going to be? <laughs> Oh, I can't do the squeaks yeah. on your floor, but yeah, I'd be mad squeaks everywhere. I'd be going <laughs> insane. So now back to baseball. There is one team that don't have a home, and why I don't, is this? BB, Steve, do you guys know? Uh, the the country doesn't want the uh, doesn't want the sports. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, they'll let the Toronto Blue Jays play if they're playing other Canadian teams, but they don't they want won't all those let American Pittsburgh teams Pirates come, come up and play. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay, okay. So they were looking for a home. Earlier in the week when I wrote the notes, this pit, the Pittsburgh deal was going to yeah. be a deal, but then it got updated and Pittsburgh said, no, forget you. Why did Pittsburgh do that? Uh, they didn't want the extra people. So they're going to have their own team with up visiting teams, and then they would have Blue Jays with their visiting teams. That's even more. It's too many people. people in their facility yeah. kind of thing. Bill, have you heard an update on uh, Toronto? No, I haven't, although it's odd about Toronto because I'd also heard something that the Bills might play their games in Toronto this this year. So it, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot there? of sense. Why, why, what have you heard? Why is the why are the Bills c- contemplating I that? Just, I just saw a headline, so I haven't really read into it uh, yet. But Bill's been threatening to move there because they want to All of this makes home. no sense. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I tried to watch a little bit of it uh, last night, and then Friday night and last night for a few minutes, and it's it's really hard. <laughs> I, I I got through maybe ten minutes, and it, that was it. Well, the Tigers are one and one, so they haven't. They, they played Cincinnati in the opener. I yeah, saw they play again today against okay. Cincinnati. That's the whole series. So oh, okay. we'll see if they can win a series. So they only got sixty games. So at least they're not zero and two. Oh, wow. Uh, so that there's that for the news on baseball. Now, lastly, did you see that Notre Dame was trying to squeak into the ACC and all yes, that kind of yes. stuff to get a conference schedule? And ACC might take them because that'd be good money. And Notre Dame does. I think on. Notre Dame should sit for the year. I really do. Yeah, just take a year off. It's one university that can say like we're we're not going to we'll be fine. And they got plenty of money. So That's what I'm not, saying. Eh, I think no. they should all sit. What's that, BV? I think they should all sit. Yeah, at some point, college sports is just not worth it, but. You don't realize what that revenue stream is to those schools. It literally is all their sports. So I don't know. Hmm. So yeah. now, an interesting one. Uh, Jeff Bezos, familiar with him? I am well aware of him. He's a uh, bald headed guy who yeah. founded Amazon. Yes. Uh, also, he, the richest man in the world? Uh, well, he just got richer one day last <laughs> week. I, I just clicked on the article because it was very interesting. It was on a Monday. In one day, him with through Amazon made thirteen billion dollars <laughs> with a B <laughs> with a B yeah. in one day. Yeah, that know. is amazing. Uh, now here's a funny it's things like that that you hear that I know Randy doesn't like to have the conversation, but like socialism and stuff like that. It's like does this one guy really need to make thirteen billion dollars in, a in year? one day? A yeah, day I rather. Know. I mean, good for him. He started off. You you you've made a company that everyone loves. So yeah. I he. he if you're going to pay someone, Amazon's crazy. So Yeah. Now, ironically, did you listen to Joe Rogan with Ben Shapiro on it? Or no, I did not. No. So they were talking about protesters and stuff that they actually attacked the Washington Post headquarters. I don't know where that is, uh, which is ironic because that's the most liberal newspaper yeah, you'll ever just, find. You no, know, they were so, just yeah. attacking whatever they Yeah, they're, attack. they're just attacking, spray painting anything. It doesn't matter. So there you go. There's a little look at some of the news. Baseball's back, and Jeff Bezos is still... Rich as hell. So that divorce really didn't matter really that much at all. Uh, So there we go. Now, Charles, pull out the one thing we're going to try this week. My wife already ate these and gave a thumbs up. Oh, okay. Uh, So So Steve managed to find... Let me flip a camera to him. He got and the, Bill's got it as a background. Yeah, BV's got it up there. I also have. <laughs> and Bill, it disappeared when Bill held it up. Disappeared into BV's background <laughs> there. Yeah, so BV managed to find them. These are the Apple Pie Kit Kats limited edition, according to their documentation. I've only here. seen them at Walmart. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, I wonder, wonder if they're is it exclusive or. Where'd know. you pick yours up at, BV? Walmart. Oh, okay. Because Walmart had that Mountain Dew flavor that was random too, didn't they? Yes, the yeah. Frostbite or whatever that. When you're was. the world's biggest grocer, you can have exclusives. I yeah, guess. Yeah. I gotta tell you, before I bite into this, I love a Kit Kat. Just so we're all on the same page. Very Kit Kats are delicious. And this would be good as an air freshener. Listen to the crunch. SMR. I don't. I don't get like an apple taste to it really. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. 
ASMR. Smack them and the ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Tastes good. It's another quality Kit Kat. I don't know. I mean, I if I were to close my eyes and tell you it was an apple pie flavor, I don't think I would. I, I would go white chocolate with a hint of apple. Yeah, or like a birthday yeah. cake kind of thing. Yeah. But they what are do you good. Think? I think it's yeah, it's just got a hint of apple. I thought it would be a little bit stronger. But still, I mean Kit Kats, you can't go wrong, man. Yeah. Tasty. Kit Kats are delicious. Japanese are right to love those things, man, because Kit Kats I had the so strawberry good. one a while back. Yeah, we had those and, from the Japanese store, didn't we? Yeah. And that was like the same thing. We, it was like a Kit Kat with just a hint of strawberry. Yeah, they must so. don't overpower you or anything with it, so. Man, can't go wrong with a Kit Kat. Yeah, I think all three of these fat guys are sitting right here. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for me. Steve, thumbs up from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're good. BD, thumbs up from you. Thumbs up. Yeah, it's... but here's the thing: limited time only at your Walmart. So yeah, and then I, I he, here's the ultimate question: mm-hmm. You got a regular thing, Kit Kats in there. You got these apple pie. Which I'm one? Going, I'm going regular. Yeah, you're going regular, right? I mean, I don't. Now, know. Have you had the dark yeah. chocolate? I, I haven't had the dark chocolate. Oh. Those are all over there too. I oh, haven't had those. Okay. Bill, have well, you had keep the... in mind, you have to actually go to a Walmart to get this stuff. So I would rather just. I can get a regular Kit Kat anywhere. Yeah. I don't want to. It's not worth going into a Walmart for it. Not much is worth going into a Walmart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bosnia, Herzegovina. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't happy going into a Walmart either. I was like, do I really have to go in here just to get a Kit Kat? How far is the Walmart from your house, BV? Oh, there was one that's only about a uh, mile and a half from me. Yeah, okay. Pretty close for us. Walmarts too. are everywhere. Yeah. Walmarts and McDonald's are just about yeah. everywhere. And Subways. And subways, yeah. Eat fresh. All right, so big uh, thumbs up for apple pie Kit Kats. Uh, we have yet to have a Kit Kat. That's I, yeah, I don't think I know a bad Kit Kat. Yeah, maybe we'll try. <laughs> do they the got dark... like a pepper flavor? Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I, don't know. Know. I don't know. Maybe we'll try a dark chocolate one. Now I do have. If you guys are interested, Michelle bought a can of chicken flavored Pringles. I know chicken we're a little flavor? we're a little burnt out on Pringles because yeah, we had a lot. Last Pringles were terrible, and these are chicken flavored. I fried chicken flavored. I, mean, I try. I don't give yeah, a shit. We'll, maybe we'll bring those in next yeah. week. Fried chicken Pringles. The more I had of those uh, Baconator ones, the worse they tasted. Yeah. <laughs> BB bailed on the I think, I think I'm with you guys on this now. As you know, after uh, well, having first a little off, bit more, they were gross as soon as we tasted them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like BB was way down with them, but I was not nah, not a fan. I couldn't handle the uh, the film, the, the after film that was left in the mouth. <laughs> nothing, nothing beats a good film left in your mouth. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go into movies and reviews. Not, not a lot because, you know, of course, COVID and got to ruin everything. But, now, Charles, what have I always said about Netflix original movies? Yeah, they're all solid sixes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're solid six. Yeah. Maybe some peak at a seven or eight. But for the most part, most Netflix movies aren't all that hot. And that you, when you watch them, you realize why they weren't re- released in theater. Now, I saw Palm Springs. Now, Palm Springs. The Andy Samberg. Andy vehicle. Samberg. Now, Andy yeah. Samberg to me, I know you love him. He's, I think he's pretty funny. He's like yeah. Will Ferrell to me. So his some of his stuff is great, other stuff not uh, so much. Yeah, so much. Oh. Like I love the movie Hot Rod. We fighting his stepdad all the time. <laughs> that movie was funny, yeah. and I like the Dick in the Box. Obviously, in some yeah. of his work on Saturday Night Live. I don't get into Brooklyn Nine Nine, but Brooklyn I, see, I see I yeah. see why it's funny though. Brooklyn Nine Nine is very good. Uh, I like it. The yeah. pop star movie I didn't like. The one where he played Adam Sandler's son, I didn't like that one either. Okay, why are we going through his whole IMDb with you uh, right now? You don't got to justify your kind of love Because Palm Springs hate. is awful. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> is it played for really funny, or is it just kind of... Well, kinda... it's Groundhog's Day. You know, I hate that kind of storytelling. So if you don't like that storytelling... Oh, I hate that. So, But it's Groundhog's Day done way worse. So... <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Bill, it, did anyone else watch this besides me? Am I the only one who watched it? I haven't watched yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, the highlight of the movie is J.K. Simmons. Yeah, so he I gets like J.K. Ca- Simmons. So Andy Sandberg's caught in a time loop so where he has to relive this day, this wedding from his girlfriend's friends getting married. And he's he's rel- reliving this wedding over and over and over again. There's a cave. And if you go in the cave, you get stuck in the time loop. Well, J.K. Simmons hung out with him in one of the times he was in the wedding, and he went in the cave. So now J.K. Simmons is pissed off at him and just randomly shows up throughout the movie like a bow and arrow and just starts shooting at him. Oh, because he's pissed because yeah, he got yeah, yeah. stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's funny, but that's only like two times in the movie. Oh. And then pretty much the rest of it, he drags this girl into it. 
And of course, just like Groundhog's Day, he's got to learn to fall in love with her and blah, blah, blah. And r- rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat over and over and over again until eventually figure a way to get out of the loop. Hmm. And the problem is, it's just not that funny. Hmm. Like I said, J.K. Simmons is funny. Like he dressed up as a cop and pulled him over and then the chick hit him with a truck and it was pretty funny. Uh. But other than that, the rest of it is just... Ugh, and What's the Tom Cruise movie that was all oh, day after tomorrow? The same thing. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Momentum. Same. I, like, I don't want to see the same movie eight times. Oh, like, it's yeah, well, just... that's what this is, and it's about two hours solid, Oof. so it, it feels like it drags, and it's just wow. like. Uh, so sorry. Who's, who's the chick? I don't. I don't anything you know of? I, I know she's popular, but I don't know. I don't recognize her. Yeah, I wonder who played opposite him. I've seen it. It's all over Hulu and stuff like that. I'm trying to think who else that we would recognize besides J.K. Simmons. Uh, I know J.K. Simmons for sure. Uh, there's a lot of like character actors on TV you that you, you've yeah. recognized, but I don't know their names. Uh, but so, Bellotti Bal- is the the female lead. What has she been in? I don't know. I'm Steve, are we going to go through each one of her movies? Oh, no, I, I'm just saying if there's something she's been. I didn't recognize her. So, uh, Palm Spring, so if Netflix movies are a six on general, Hulu movies are a four in general. <laughs> oh, my God. And this one I give a three. Wow. I've watched three Hulu originals now, Little Monsters, the, the yeah. Postcard Killings, and this one. And they're all turds. All wow. three of them are turds. So Hulu movies I don't even think would make network. <laughs> so wow. That's how bad these things are. <laughs> no. Wow. So now after that low point, I went on to watch season two of Brockmire. Bill, did you watch season two yet? Yeah, in fact, I'm I'm halfway through season three. Oh wow! BV's <laughs> chewing through it. We know what BV did this past week. Great again. Season two was great. <laughs> it shows this big. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like episode eight of season two. That was the end of the season finale where he goes into like rehab I and mean, he goes on, like this dark path where he meets this red haired chick and he's doing heroin. Mm. It, it kind of loses a little a humor little there. Too deep. Yeah. yeah, they call it the uh, crashing or what? What do they call that? We Hitting rock bottom. Hitting rock bottom. Yeah, and that was the name of the episode. Mm. So, it, but out of sixteen episodes, only one's kind of eh. But the rest are all solid, funny ass stuff. So, mm. I'm still going strong because I want to keep it going from season to season. Because sometimes when you watch a show and you tell somebody tails off, and then all of yeah. a sudden the third season rolls around, you're like, oh, this is terrible, Bill. BV, yeah, where are you at? Are you still high on? Well, it? yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, I, I obviously haven't watched as many shows as you guys do because you guys cover a, a, a pretty wide net. This has got to be within the two or three funniest shows I've ever seen in my life. Wow. It's up there. It's up there. Yeah. It's up, um, up there with Married it's, Children to me. Wow. Yeah. It's it's really good. The one thing I'll say, not the preview into whatever, because I, when I saw where it was going at the end of season two, I thought, oh, great. This is shark jump time because now he's going to try to get sober. Yeah. And how's that going to work? He just relapses and, immediately in season three. Well, I, I won't, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will say that all the concerns that I had about it not being funny when he does that, completely the opposite. Yeah. The show might actually be getting funnier in season oh, wow. three. But they have so, intervention in Joe Buck's like via, via Skype. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's calling like some old lady's golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and Brock was like, I got money on that tournament. <laughs> like, it's, pre- yeah. it's a great oh, show, was... I'm telling you. So it's still holding tight. Uh, Wigs, Fair. still take your credit. <laughs> yeah. um, so next week we'll actually cover season three, and then Bill will probably be done. Bill will be probably done yeah, with the whole Bill's series. Bill's chewing through that shit. He ain't messing yeah. around. Well, at first, Hulu only had the first two seasons. Now they got all four. So that's oh, cool. Okay. And that's so, the entire season. That's the entire it show. just ended in May. Okay. Yeah, the, so the series. Yeah, they still got the weird one commercial thing or whatever. Yeah, I still IFC? get commercial yeah, it's throughout the whole thing, uh, which is some deal with IFC, I guess. That's, That's kind why of they, annoying. Even yeah. if you have the yeah, commercial free Hulu, you still get stuck with the commercials, which kind of sucks. So Brock Meyer season two still holding good. Still uh, highly recommend it. Palm Springs is a floating turd in a pool. All right, so now I I have uh, a free pass there for the Apple TV. Oh, you signed up for the, a week? How long yeah, did you get? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a week, pretty much, because I wanted to see the two things. I really wanted to see Greyhound. Yeah. I will say, I watched the two things. This is review on review, review crime here. Uh, Charles already talked about Beastie Boys. I don't What was the whole title? I forget the title. Uh, it's, not, it's just a story. Yeah, like just story. search Beastie Boys on Apple it's TV. Great. I loved it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would have liked to see is maybe the whole songs instead of just like parts of songs. Yeah, but you can't do the whole like they're trying to tell you the stories. I know, of it. but I, I want to hear you want to watch the music song? videos. Once the song comes out, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> play the whole video. Then it stops. Like, 
Huh. Yeah, but they're they're lacing know, the story. I, know, I, know. <laughs> you I uh, hate you right now. Intergalactic right? came out. Yeah, it got, oh, it stopped. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, uh, I thought it was thing. interesting where they were talking about like the experimental way they figured out things. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, there's a lot about to be stuff I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. And the was, guy who died. Adam was Yelp. like kind of a yeah. musical genius. Yeah, he would like, know he how would to just, play the floor. Bit. They're like, yeah. I don't know how. Like, he just yeah. randomly does stuff. I thought so. it was good. I if really... you liked the Beastie Boys back in the eighties and nineties, or even early two thousands, highly suggest it. It's even a little different because like the the way that they tell the story is like a stage show and stuff like that. So it's not your traditional like single camera documentary yeah. style thing. It's really good. I, I really liked really it. Good. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, but eight out of ten, nine out of ten, whatever. Yeah, that's great. Somewhere in there. I would be interested to see like a Bohemian Rhapsody version of that, where they hired actors to play Beastie Boys. You're and obsessed cover with Bohemian Rhapsody. No, I would like to see a movie you like want that. everything Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> yeah, well, it's I get the whole songs that way. Favorite movie. <laughs> I know, but you could YouTube the shit. I you know. wanted to watch some fucking music marathon. I was waiting for it to go. I was like, oh yeah, I remember the song, and then it stops. It's like son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about Run How DMC. Your I'm like, critique of like not playing the whole song. They start playing Run DMC. I was like, it's tricky, and yeah. it stops. Like son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you just. I want to watch music. Maybe. I know. I had to go to iTunes afterwards to watch zero to listen to all the songs. But it was good. I'm not ripping it. It was good. Yeah. Now, yeah. I got to say, Charles is absolutely right on this. He yeah. undersold it a little bit to me. Uh, yeah. I'm telling you right now, this is the best movie I've seen in five years. <laughs> I, yeah. It's up there with the Green Book. I loved fucking Greyhound. Uh, yeah, Greyhound didn't really bullshit good. around. Hour and a half. The Elizabeth Shoe stuff is five minutes? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> so... I don't know what the fuck the, cr- the critics are talking about. Uh, yeah, totally. This movie is excellent. It's like 20 U.S. ships going it's from New York convoy, yeah. to London. And somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic is the Black Sea section, they call it, or Black something. I Where they what. basically are out of air support. They have no and, air support yeah. there. And there's like it's six. It's an 18-hour window, I think yeah, is what they Yeah, is. somewhere along yeah. that line. 24 hours, 18 hours, yeah, something like that. something like that. And there's six German U-boats, which is a submarine for all you folks out there who don't know what it is. And those U-boats are just picking them off like sharks in the water. Dude, it's crazy. It is the most excellent movie I've <laughs> ever seen. Yeah. The only knock I'll give it is sometimes they go pretty heavy in the naval talk. And I was like, wait, what? Go <laughs> wait, what? So you felt like a seaman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, man. That, there was a couple parts, too, where like the CG got a little cheap. Yeah, you know, yeah. But so, I, I mean, you take a point off for that. All right. Uh, give it's it. still an excellent I, movie. I'm not here to tell you. It's going to be a sad day when Tom Hanks passes away. Yeah. No one will make good World War II movies yeah. anymore. Because he's the only guy. Guy left that knows how to do it. Him he and loves Steven Spielberg. those things, man. He loves World War II. Excellent movie. I, one could argue most of the movie is just in the command deck of the one ship, but it's so it's, it's action, Super intense. suspense. And they come intense, onto the radio with thriller. them and stuff. Oh, like, man. oh man, it's so it's, good. <laughs> it is so good. I Gray Wolf coming to find you, Gray. Yeah, like German dudes heckling them. It's like what the <laughs> hell is this? Crazy. Dropping depth charges, then they run out of depth charges. I'm telling you, I, the franticness of it too. It's like a weird, like World War II horror movie because you're like, yeah, are they going to the, make yeah, it? Like, yeah. who's dying? And then they get shot they get from there. friendly fire. Yeah, and stuff. Oh great. man, it is so good. <laughs> How the critics are not like that? <laughs> I've it baffles the hell out of me because that is an excellent movie. Hour and a half doesn't stay too long. You don't have to sit through three hours yeah, of bullshit. It's only like an hour and forty. It's like what said, Pearl Harbor should have been. Yeah. It should have been intense like that yeah. and great. Instead, I got because I said that Elizabeth shoes like five minutes. Yeah, and, and they, they don't it, touch on any of it. Really. The only thing I miss is how did he hurt his foot? I, I don't know. Like the, the, all of a sudden, the, his foot was bleeding. What I thought was the implication was because he was on his feet for so long. Oh, maybe that's that what it was, was and the, he wasn't eating, just drinking coffee. Yeah, and he was just and then like. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. But Man, like, right off the bat, he puts the helmet on and the thing on. Like, Let's go. I'm like, God damn. This is excellent. Yeah. Chasing See, something. I'll follow you, Tom Hanks. Where are we going? <laughs> no, where are we going, Tom Hanks? Yeah. Oh, man. I, I'm telling Dad would love that. Only downside of the movie, it's stuck on that shit fucking platform. <laughs> Apple yeah. TV. So there's probably never going to be yeah. a DVD or Blu-ray. Like, Dad would love that in a minute, but he's not going to sit through. He's not going to have Apple I TV. wonder how much Apple broke out the Brinks trunk to, to, to buy the rights to that. Oh, because they if were you so figure it would get so many more views on Netflix and oh, everything yeah. else. Because yeah. Dad's never going to see that. And that's a shame because he would love that movie. Yeah. I'm telling you right it's now. A, it is. So and I think Tom Hanks is a little bummed that it ended up on Apple TV. Yeah. If you listen to Tell this you, you saw an IMAX, how awesome that'd be with I'm the boats and the explosions. Yeah, it's great. I was cranking. I, I had to watch it on my computer. The, 
sure. the depth <laughs> charges too, and oh, then you come down. And then they had that little decoy thing. Oh, I go out for days. <laughs> I text you immediately. You probably didn't see it. I was like, this movie is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I was so And then excited. like they can hear the helicopter noise or the propeller noise of the oh, torpedo. Yeah. I like that stuff. better than 1917. I'll be honest. Oh, I love 1917. I think 1917 is a good movie too, but I think this edged it out for me. It's told you. It was really good. Yeah. Excellent movie. Excellent movie. Nine out of ten easily. Give a maybe a point off because a little too much navy jargon. And yeah, but you, you I, know, that's yeah, I know it's, it's played for real. Yeah, so. and, and like you said, some of the CG was like. Yeah, there was a couple points like when they kind of breezed up along the one ship. Was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like a little too close, but uh, man, no, nonetheless, it's very excellent. Jesus stuff. Christ, that movie was excellent. I would, <laughs> I would buy a copy of Blu-ray just to no, have it right. No. But unfortunately, it's on crap ass Apple TV. Yeah. So if you want to see it, you can sign up for a free uh, pass or whatever on Apple TV. Uh, like I said, it's a shame because Dad would love that movie. Uh, so I can't say enough about Greyhound. And I'm Charles. coming for you, Greyhound. <laughs> yeah, no, they so, got some random creepy they kept German changing dude. the channel and stuff. Yeah, it was so oh. good. And then how they're signaling each other with with the lights yeah. and stuff. Oh, man, it was so good. Uh, I'm sorry, that was just good. Uh, anyways, so, so now what is this next thing? Fear City, New York City. This just the mafia. hit Netflix, and this has got BV written all over it. I, it's called Fear City, New York versus the Mafia, and it basically chronicles when the five families. <laughs> I'm <listening>. so <laughs> everyone can see Steve eat the Kit Kat out of there on Facebook land. <laughs> um, it These basically, are it chronicles that the downfall. You know how Rudy Giuliani says that he brought down the the, fa- the mob in New York City and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. It's basically a three part miniseries documentary on that that whole like the FBI essentially bringing them down to New York in. As someone who enjoyed The Sopranos and stuff, you can see how they must have consulted some of the people that did this stuff for The Sopranos and like how they wrote. Like a lot of the stuff that happened in real life, you could see in The Sopranos series and stuff. I think that this documentary, again, the three part documentary where they chronicle each part, it was good, but it, it definitely had a little too much of the FBI like listening to tape and bugging things. Mm. The cool part was, though, is there was a big section of the show where they showed you from the guy who planted the bugs perspective how they would get into like these mafiosos like houses and plant bugs and like their cable boxes and stuff like that. Like he showed how they would add interference to their cable signal, so then they would call, they'd intercept the call from the cable company and then come in as the cable guy and everything mm. like that. So Stuff like that was really enter- interesting. And then, like, how the FBI built the case and all this kind of stuff against those. Because you've heard of them, like, the Gambino crime family and all the, the bigger names and all that kind of stuff. Someone like BV, who I know has some definite interest in, like I said, like, mafioso type stuff. This is right up your alley. But I, it, it was kind of slower than I would say. It, it only gets, like, a 7 out of 10 for me. I think it could have been a little bit more paced. They didn't do a good job. Also, I love at the end of a series the sh- where they tell you what happened to certain people, mm-hmm. you know, and they they only barely did that, uh, and that kind of annoys me and stuff like that. At so, the end of Greyhound, even told us. Yeah, so I don't know. Like I said, if, if you if you have a love of any of that like organized crime or anything, which a lot of dudes do, you, this is going to tick a lot of boxes for you. Mm-hmm. It's just not something that's super compelling that it's like, oh man, you got to stop and go watch this. I would say that that's something for Greyhound, but not necessarily for uh, Fear City, New York versus the mob. Bill, is this something up your alley you'd like to see? Well, well actually, I've started it. Um, you know, anything particularly, I'm, I'm a, I have to admit, I'm, I'm a bit of a New York mob aficionado, uh, the five families, so particularly. Um, and so I started it. I've only seen the first of the three episodes. Okay. Um, what I would say with it so far, and maybe a slightly different angle, is that um, I thought they were, I thought they could have actually set it up a little bit more. I mean, they were very sort of just on, on surface about, you know, the, the mob sort of reach at the time. That, that you know, seventies into the eighties. Well, they'll get into it. So yeah, they, they go right into. I mean, as far as setting up the, uh, you know, that they go, you know, they talk to the, uh, to the law professor that originally wrote the RICO statute, and like um, how they started to use that. Yeah. yeah, and then then it you know then they started you know a little bit with. I, I'm hoping it sounds like they do go into more detail about you know how they, they got the original, yeah. 
the original plants and into like uh, Angelo Ruggiero's house, who he was like the main goon, sort of, you know, a bodyguard for John Gotti. Um, they go into how John Gotti like killed Paul Castellano and all that yeah. kind of stuff too. They'll go yeah. into it. It's just so part of the thing was they start right when when they actually start going into the details of the family. It's already under under Castellano's reign. Um, I always had a lot of interest in Carlo Gambino, who preceded Paul. He's the one mobster. I think he led the. I want to say that he led the family for something like twenty seven straight years and was the only mobster to actually like die in power without being whacked or hmm. uh, or jail it's like unbelievable like uh harmony in the families during that period of time uh so it's I, it, interesting i would like to have seen him develop it a little bit more um but i do think that i i'm interested in it because you usually see these stories from the side of the mob and then they just there's way more generalities yeah. yeah this is actually seems to be going in depth and the effort to bring them down so seeing it from the other perspective yeah. to me is very interesting and it sure is here. it's just the problem is is to to bv's point the mafia angle is more exciting to watch. The Fed yeah. side is not that entertaining, if that makes sense. There's a lot of like, and like I said, the to learn how they bug stuff was kind of like, oh, that's neat and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, but like five minutes. Of it yeah, and it's like, and then they got the guy like rewinding the tape for 20 minutes while he's listening to a, a bug call. It's like, okay, I get it. Like, but it's just like next, you know what yeah. I mean? But like, they will get into a little bit later, like. How they, they, they basically they, they held a racket on all concrete in New York, and that's what actually ends up getting them pinched and stuff like that. So it's good. It's not great is what I would say. It's, there's plenty of better movies and obviously the Sopranos show, but you can see where the ties come in and stuff like that. So it's a solid seven. It's a little bit better than the Netflix six, but it's not amazing is what I would all say. Right. If you're that's sitting about, in New York, I, that's about what I give it to right so far. So far you're at about a seven too, BB? Yeah. All right, now let's see. I am back in animation because uh, everyone loves this so much. <laughs> I finished up uh, Ultraman, which held up okay. And then Bill's got a picture of it. Impressed. Now, did you ever play the Castlevania games when you were younger? Yeah, I'm aware of ba- Belmont. Simon all that Belmont. Kind of, yeah. You're out to kill Dracula. Yeah. Most of the game was in his big magical castle. Yeah. And you got to find him and kill him. Very tedious, hard yeah. games, too. Now, this is three uh, season three on Netflix, Castlevania. By Powerhouse Animation. That's important. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, first season one was only four episodes. Season two was eight episodes. Now, this one has expanded into ten. So it's almost like, let's put four out there, see if anybody will watch, and then give them a little more money. Uh, it's animated beautifully. It's, it looks just like a Japanese animation. Uh, I mean, visually, it's, it's very stunning. You know, it's, But again, just like a Japanese animation, it's a little quirky on the story. Mm. So instead of just following Simon Belmont, who you were in the game, it also includes Alucard, who is Dracula's son. He's essentially like Blade. He's half human, half Dracula vampire. And Dracula gets murdered in season two. Spoilers, sorry. <laughs> so season three kind of picks up where the rest of the vampires are trying to unite and, and take, the, take away the humans. Uh, the story's a little wonky. And they try this weird like humor here and there, and it just falls flat over and over again. Yeah. But it, it looks beautiful. And if you're really, really into the game, and Dracula and all that stuff, then I suggest for you. But for me, it's like a six. You sit it's through a it. throw it on in the background thing. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like. that's yeah. what it is. Now, the reason I bring up Powerhouse Animation, they are an American animation studio in Texas. I did not know that. But they got a definite Japanese oh, look if, you, vibe, if I yeah. showed you the cartoon, yeah. you would swear to God it's Studio Glibby or, yeah. or Gundam manga people. Vibe, yeah. Yeah. They do a hell of a job, and it looks, I mean, you could tell their influence is Japanese, mm. which I was surprised to find out that they were actually from Texas. Mm. So I thought that was unique, but uh, this week, uh, well, I'll give it a six. If you're really into the show, watch it. If not, now next week, Really excited that Transformer 1 War for Cybertron is coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, you got that in rapid fire, and yeah. I'm intrigued for it. If yeah. it's the, the events that lead up to the show as I know it, I'm yeah. into it. So I'm really hoping that's good, so there we go. Now, this week, uh, Xbox Game Show came out, Showcase came out. Well, because there no there's no E3 because no of COVID. And, and there's no Comic-Cons or anything. Yeah. 
and there's no any kind of expos of, of any kind really. So a lot PlayStation did one, and now Xbox is doing one. Xbox did one back in March where they just went over the parts of the new Xbox. But it's kind of a reveal of hardware. Yeah, to- this one was strictly game. So they came out, gave you an hour and a half. Did you watch the whole thing or highlights? I watched highlights. It's I couldn't watch man. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I watched an 11 minute breakdown and a gadget, which is my go to. Yeah, for, um, that's, a, that's a smart one. So I listed all the games. We're, we're, we're not going to take a lot of time, but we're going to go over, tell you what each one is. You guys can just tell me if that sounds good or, yeah. All right. So the first one, obviously, is Halo Infinite. This is open world, and you got a grappling hook. It's a system seller for me. I love Halo. Yeah. But the big thing that they talked about is this is going to be the de facto Halo game that they're going to iterate on, is the, what they were implying. Did you see that at no, all? Iterate so on. with the. the in other words, the story will continue within this version of the Halo is what they're basically. So the other ones on previous systems are just well, le- no, legends so what, now? The way I'm to understand it is we release Halo Infinite and then we do content bundles that keep coming into it. Oh, so you're saying they're not making another game. Yeah, that's what they're saying. So yeah. like Destiny, they'll just be an expansion every yep, so often. Yep, yep. That's interesting. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Uh, that's well, fine by me. I like Halo. I love Halo Again, games. This, now, one thing about, uh, before we go on, Xbox Game Showcase... Every game you're hearing is on the Game Pass and equally on the PC and Xbox Series X, Xbox One. It's on everything. So Fantastic Halo, value. And that's a big thing with Microsoft now. They're trying to pimp the games and saying it's available everywhere, not just on their system, which I, I, I can't help sell system if you keep doing that, but all right. It's them. They, they, I don't. They, I think you give more credence to the, the the PC gamer. I don't think there's that many people. Is my opinion. Well, no, you're probably right. I, I've just. It's cre- more of like a feather in their cap that hey, it's available. But if you're on a both. kid with 500 bucks or whatever the amount of the yeah. new gen, and you can afford one or the other, you can say, well, I can get the PlayStation and maybe in the future get a PC to play the Xbox games. Or yeah, but know. a gaming PC costs you a fortune. Or they you're might crazy. have a PC already. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Know. I think you, I think you're looking through adult lenses yeah, on that probably one. I'm on that you, one. There's no kids with like a twelve hundred dollar Alienware rig unless they're like Richie Rich. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one, Steve. So of course Halo Infinite, and they showed a bunch of gameplay. It was ten minutes long. So then they talked to developers. Next up was State of Decay three, and just for Bill, it's more zombies. Bill, are yeah. you excited? Zombie elk. <laughs> yes. So they made it. Uh, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill's not buying State of the Game yeah. Three. Uh, yeah, they showed a zombie. Was it a deer or no? Yeah, elk uh, or something? Was, it yeah, ate a wolf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which makes sense because all these zombie yeah. shows, you think one of the animals would become yeah, a zombie. Eventually, there's going to be some turnover between other mammals. Yeah, I mean, I think after The Last of Us Part Two, I think I'm pretty much done with. It looks beautiful though. It, it did look good. Beautiful. I've never played State of the Game One or Two, I haven't either. Uh, so I, I don't know. Now, of course, Forza was on there, and just <sighs> like and just like Gran Turismo. These racing games always look fantastic, and they always have to have it to launch in one the right when the fidelity systems come of these out. things are insane. But then you realize you're racing, and then it's like fun for said, a day or yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Formula One. The it, best games of racing for me are the Burnout Paradise, where you feel like you're playing with Hot Wheels. I don't know why yeah. anyone likes to. Well, that's kind of what the Forza Horizons are like. Yeah, I, Forza Motorsports is strictly it's it's, it's racing, racing draft. Yeah, yeah. you're not whatever. rubbing, you're not racing. I don't need to know about my suspension. Yeah. Now, this next one, Everwild, this looks like, if you remember Korra or The Last mm-hmm. Airbender, it's kind of got that feel to it, yep. cell shaded look. And it wasn't for me. I don't know. Do you, do you no, know? I don't have yeah. much to add to that. And then it was Tell Me Why. This was a murder mystery again with a brother and a sister where they'd have flashbacks. You got to piece it together. I like that they're giving you some variety, but I don't think I'd play this game. <laughs> uh, Ori, Will of the Wisps. Now, the big thing of the, or the Ori stuff that you're going to get into, they pushed, they pimped frame rate big time on mm, this yeah, one. Frame they, rate was they, huge. They, uh, they yeah. were talking about how this can run at 120 hertz and all this kind of stuff to take advantage. And they had a side by side video between a 60 hertz and 120 hertz. And I, frame rate's lost on me. Yeah, I'll I be honest. Unless it, it gets so slow that it chugs, a uh, frame rate really. Yeah, I remember old Nintendo games where there's a lot of characters on the screen and yeah, stuff would slow would down. Chug, yeah. Yeah, but I haven't seen that in years. The only thing I don't like is frame rate slow down. I don't get off too deep into, like like you said, super high frame rates. Right. He's only 45 frame rate. He's yeah, I don't know. But, anyways, or, but it's already out, so whatever. Outer Worlds, this is a game that's already out too. They're getting a DLC called Gorgon. I, this looks like a cell shaded Bioshock Borderlands kind of thing. I'm not into it. Oh man, I got to. Oh, I made the cameras isolate on that sneeze. Oh great, good times. <laughs> uh, next one is grounded. Now this looked kind of fun because it looked like Honey I Shrunk yeah, the yeah, Kids. I saw it, yeah. But again, a cartoony, not really high end, next gen looking game. 
But it does look fun. Like you're basically hunting and you shrunk the kids as a game. Now, this is the one everyone kind of liked. This is avowed. This is a first-person fantasy role-playing. Yeah. It's kind of like Elder Scrolls, it, it Skyrim. Did look, it did look next level as far but as... But didn't so. show a lot. I just remember seeing yeah, the hand and well, a couple that's things. always that Elder Scrolls kind yeah, of vibe. so... And this other one, they didn't have really a trailer for it, but I've seen trailers before. Hellblade 2. It's that girl that has the black on her face that comes down. She, it, it, I think I played the first Hellblade. That's how memorable it is. I can't yeah, remember. I but the say. second one looks like they really upped the graphics on it, so I'd be interested to see it. Uh, but it wasn't very big. Now, Psychonauts 2. Had Jack Black. Jack Black. And, yeah, I, yeah. Did you play the first Psychonauts? No, but people love it. They there's, do love it. It's, there's a certain following to that game, but not for me. Yeah, it's I a did. Telltale game, and Microsoft owns Telltale at this point. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so. Destiny 2, this, I don't know why they're pimping this. This game's been out for how many years? You can't get away from this game. Yeah, it, it, you know, Stadia has it. Everyone has it, whatever. Stalker 2. Now, this game originally only came out for the PC. I guess it's uh, it's Chernobyl in the future, and you got it looked cool. Yeah, I, okay. It didn't make much sense to me, but now this one we've been bit by Warhammer so many times now. Warhammer forty thousand. What was time. the last first person they had? The one uh, uh, Warhammer suck ass. Yeah, I think it was, called. It was a big it, Warhammer it was terrible. first person one before. I've given so many Warhammers a try. Yeah, and you just, wanted to be good. Yeah, it just never is. Tetris Effect again looks good. Looks, looks good, good but it's Tetris forty year old game. Yeah. I don't know. The I don't gunk. think you need next gen hardware. Yeah, the gunk. Now this looks cartoony too. It looked like kind of uh, what is that game where you can go to all the different planets all the time, and it's supposed to be always expanding. No Man's Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be like that, but cartoony looking. The medium. This is a horror game. This this has got Bert or my niece Tabitha written all over it. Uh, very very horror. Like you got two dimensions at the same time. You can go back and forth. Ah, I don't really like horror games. I'll be honest. Fantasy Star Online 2, I played a Fantasy Star one time. I don't get the love. It's like a weird Japanese animation, but turned into an online role-playing game. Are you? A, it's been around since Dreamcast. Do you like Fantasy Stars? No, no, no. But they get, people love them, so whatever. Uh, Crossfire X, now, I put the, uh, the little st- asterisk next to a lot of these. are the ones I thought were decent. Yeah, that one looked pretty good. This one looks like Metal Gear mixed with Call of yep. Duty. So uh, that should be pretty good. I don't know if it's only multiplayer or not. I don't know what studios attached to it either, which is yeah, I didn't see that either. But there was no date on any of these last ones, so who knows when they're actually going to come yeah. out? And then Fable was just a trailer. It was a frog eating a fairy. It looked great. Yeah, but I don't know if that's people what the are chomping at the bit to get a new Fable game. I played all the three Fables. Uh, I, Bread uh, crumbing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I thought they were okay. I, you know, people love them though. That's yeah. what Peter Mullen knew. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I guess a new studio took over for this fable. Oh, okay. But I don't know if he's part of it or not, because I think his old studio went out of business. So pros and cons. Uh, one pro, everything's on Game Pass, like you said. It's great. So, and also, a lot of it's on PC. You're going to talk about it a little later. It seems like they're going to push everyone towards Game Pass. They're going to yeah. get rid of yeah. just the basic Xbox Live. Yeah. yeah. And some games, to me, look real good. Uh, and, and a lot of them were coming out this year, and it seemed like a good variety. So you had horror, you had... Yeah, the kinds that would appeal to you, me, mm-hmm. you know, racing and yeah. uh, so a lot of now some of the cons. I thought a lot of them look cartoony. So you're next Jenny and next Jenny, next Jen, and you're, you're giving me a cartoony look. Some of them are kind of eh, Forza. I mean, can you get it? I mean, Forza's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, but how if you want to push hardware, you want a beautiful racing game. Yeah. If you want to push hardware, you have to. And then some of them had no release date whatsoever, so you're not sure when they're coming out. So, but all in all, I, at a scale of one to ten, I give the whole showcase a seven. Uh, it's probably equal to me with the PlayStation One. PlayStation had three or four games. I think I it like. edges, and me and you talked midweek about mm-hmm. it. For yeah. me, I think the Xbox edges slightly, just because of like I said, the, the I can't say enough. The Project X Cloud stuff is coming to the Game Pass for everyone. They'll be able to yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You, you'll get Game Pass with all those first party stuff within your bundle. I, I just. I, I think if, if if I'm 15 year old Charles and I get one console, I want an Xbox. Is what I think is what I'm saying. Now, Bill, would anything that I read off uh, persuade you into buying an Xbox? It's, I know you're not going to buy an Xbox system, but say you were in the market, you were bored one day, we're on lockdown again in 2022, <laughs> and you say I got an extra 700 bucks from the government, I want to buy a system. Would you consider an Xbox? Well, probably not, but not because of anything that's in there. It's just that. I, I was never comfortable with Xbox when it and since it came out. I never liked the way the controller felt. I'm used to PS, uh, you know, to, to the Sony platform. Um, most of these guys, the, the part that kind of uh, disqualifies me is that 
some of the better games here are the ones that seem like they'd be really fun are first persons. And I am so horribly bad. At <laughs> some first people just never games. get those first persons. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, don't, that, I don't understand why that's a Bert, struggle. To this day, can He's played video games his whole life. And he's, it's crazy to me. He hates yeah, first person. I've, I've never, yeah, but then I guess in Bert's defense, and this is what I would tell to someone like BV. Is if you're not into the first person, you probably should keep digging around. There's going to be a gameplay style that you can dig at, yeah. in 2020, you know, and that's the ultimate point. But he probably doesn't care at this point. <laughs> most yeah, of, is it worth most of them are 45 and don't care. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm such a. I mean, I'm barely still a casual game player. There's really no point in me going outside of what I know and I'm already comfortable with. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, and you know, sports games are all multi-platform, so you don't have to yeah. list sports games. Except for the show, that's still only PlayStation. PlayStation. It's the only yeah. single player, uh, multiple. The only baseball game out there. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. That's a look at the Xbox showcase. I know I nerded out a little too much for that one, but I, I watched it. Charles watched it. Thought we could talk about it. Well, now, you were kind of you were you come to it because again you've got the PC rig. You you're like I like the Xbox stuff because I'll just do it on my PC. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that that's great. So I don't even have to buy the Xbox. I can just play it right. Now. But you know, Phil Spencer told me it would play better on the Xbox if I got the Xbox. But because it's locked in hardware, they yeah. know exactly what type of hardware. Yeah. I told you before. That's one of the things I got out of PC. Chasing PC hardware drives me mental. I just have zero <laughs> patience. BV has no patience for first or for first person shooters. I have no patience for hardware in a way. It says I can't uh, stand it. That is true. So let's go to some hardware reviews of some stuff, Charles. What do you have, Everlast? Yeah, so I buy, I mean, and I've started, I like a lot of the boxing stuff. As I get older, and Steve, let me get on that shot with Steve so you can, everyone can see Steve eating that Kit Kat. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I like to do the boxing stuff. As I'm stuck in quarantine and no gyms are How, How's that tennis elbow? Well, so that's why. So... I started hitting the heavy bag real good, and I developed that tennis elbow as we talked about. And it's pretty well, it's probably 90% of the way there. Every once in a while, it kind of twinges and hurts a little bit. But I see why Bob bailed on racquetball, because if you don't attend to it and you don't baby it, it's never going to go away. You're just going to have that annoying tendon issue for mm -hmm. a long time. So I have kind of recognized that, and I stopped hitting the heavy bag and, and did that. So then I went and got a double-ended bag, and a lot of, and I'm sure BV, kind of an older... Boxer yeah. guy, have you? They, they were used to be referred to as headache bags. Is that yeah, what? Yeah, there, yeah. There, there's a, a very specific purpose for the bag, at least in, in boxing training. It's it's a timing and defense. It's also uh, targeting. That's a, you feel like yeah, a well, fool. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh my god! You'll hit it one way and it won't. It doesn't react. So then, like to target it and to get Is that into the one that. with the two ropes, and you're supposed to correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and it, it shoots back and forth at you, and you just kind of. You can flick it around and move it in, and it kind of it'll come back at you. So you yeah. can kind of practice getting yeah. out of the way of punches, and then hitting a moving target. It's a really useful tool. Do you have it, one, Bill? Pardon? Do you have one? I do. Yes. Oh, see, there you go. So yeah, I I picked this up because again, I'm an animal. I want to take a heavy bag and just go to town on it. So this is nice because I I don't have. I can still kind of get the the cardio of getting the getting the boxing in there. But at the same time, I'm not doing that shock to my tendon that that heavy bag tends to do. Even though every once in a while I still hit the heavy bag, and I'm like, I'm an idiot. What am I gonna do? <laughs> but like, it's a it's a much better tool because it doesn't have the same impact to my elbow that the previous one was. The only thing I'll say about the Everlast one, so I paid about forty two bucks for it on the internet. I, I mostly buy Everlast gear. It is the quintessential name in, in all things boxing. So I just you can't go wrong if you buy Everlast stuff. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I don't know if BV has a different opinion otherwise, but one hundred percent. Yeah. So buy the Everlast stuff. It's it costs you a little extra money, but it's it's been quality stuff. The only thing I'll say though, and so it'll Everlast you. Correct. Yeah. So I already have <laughs> some hooks at the top of the ceiling for Lorna's ring. So all I do is hook it up there. And then I use my weight pin to kind of hold it at the bottom, and it works out good. It came with, like, S-hooks, and, like, it was annoying because as the thing kind of rattles around, like, every once in a while, the hooks would come out. So, like, I had to replace the S-hooks with, like, you know, like, when you do, like, a lat pull down the, in the gym, those clips? Mm -hmm. Like, those, I, had to just, I had some extra one of those clips, and I just swapped out the ends. It's just one of those things to consider that's kind of annoying. I don't know why they just come with S-hooks. Because as this thing's rattling around, it tends to kind of come loose. So I fixed it with those little um, 
uh, spring clips or whatever you want to call it. But big fan of it, and it's great because I can still do my little cardio stuff with it. And I just enjoy the boxing stuff. I have a blast doing it, and you even had fun when we mm-hmm. were doing it downstairs. It's one of those things that it's sneaky cardio that's kind of fun to do, so I tend to like sneaky it. Sneaky cardio is the best cardio because you're just having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when yet when it feels like a chore or work, it's like, oh, screw that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there you go, Everlast Double End Bag. Charles getting his Rocky on. Now, Bill, tell us about... Now, first, before I say this, the best description I've ever seen, Junk Crusher. Man, <laughs> the Mongoose Malice Fat Tire Bicycle, Bill. Yeah, so, again, in, in the, uh, the the continuing search to find, like, you know, good hobbies for myself, I thought, well, I uh, was thought it might be good to get on a bicycle, get some exercise, you know, maybe some, some more uh, low impact. So um, part of the problem with, you know, with the, the virus, that, you know, situation we've been having is that a lot of the bike manufacturers stopped, you know, they, they shut down. So it was tough, just like it was tough to find uh, workout equipment, it was tough to find bicycles. And then, of course, finding one to, you know, fit the full-figured man, uh, <laughs> even more complicated. Bicycle. And I found it early on. What? Oh, let's think of that Queen song. <laughs> oh, oh. The, um, yeah, so what I found is that most of the uh, most of the bikes that were made to hold larger people started about fifteen hundred bucks and go up from there. And I wasn't, you know, I certainly wasn't going to spend that kind of money. So I was happy when I finally saw on Amazon that there was one available at a reasonable price. Um, this was just under four hundred bucks from Amazon. Um, it's not officially rated for a certain weight, but in the uh, in the comments there are people that were quite a bit bigger than I am that have no problems with it. Um, and so I had it, and of course we all know I'm not uh, I'm not mechanical, as I've said many years. I'm not necessarily a motherfucking good wrench. So <laughs> I did take it to a bike shop and paid to have it assembled, um, and set it up and took it out for the first time. And a couple issues I had: one is that with the 26 inch tires, it's a little bit taller than it would otherwise normally be, and so I think it's actually made it. it it's probably better suited for someone. Shaquille you know, O'Neal. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm I'm. 511 it's probably better set for someone that's like 62 to 64 um so i had to get a little creative in how to make that work uh, <laughs> and then the first time i wrote it i realized I, and i knew that i was going to need to ch- switch the seats but i didn't want to wait so i took it out and this for such a large bike and i don't know if you can see the picture of the, the seat in the, in the yeah, video but it's literally one of these kind of hard thin it's like seats. a torpedo looking seat yeah. oh my god so i right i up I, the taint. Right <laughs> it. I thought the issue was going to be that you know because i'm haven't really been particularly active and and i thought i was gonna you know i'm horribly out of shape so i thought well okay i'm just, i'm gonna barely be able to ride and be dead it wasn't that i was too tired or my legs hurt too much did you to go ride. solo dolo or did you take your woman with you on your bike ride oh no she doesn't have a bike it oh just, yeah we talked about that she doesn't know how to ride yeah a bike. never mind so, i forgot so you just kind of rolled it, out the yeah. crushing the the, the, the uh, amount of pain on the junk was so bad that i had i had to call it early and bring it back in so oh, wow. um i've since put on a larger seat that it was more cushion that uh i also got from amazon so that was an extra 40 bucks so now it's uh it's it's much more comfortable still getting used to the so all told you're into this bike like 550 or some shit right yeah about about that much yeah. and i haven't bought a helmet yet either which i probably yeah, will are you do seriously gonna wear one? stupid i wear one when i ride my electric scoot yeah, I kind of feel like. Well, the thing is, is I, I thought you know that yeah, aneurysm. About, he's he's held together with medical science. <laughs> well, yeah, but they also talk about how you know they always talk about you know getting on a like getting back on a bike. You just get on. It's yeah, you know, the mechanics of it. Sure, I mean you know to pedal and you steer, but what I realized when I first got now I haven't really ridden a bike since I was a, a real bike, other than like a stationary bike since I was probably about eighteen. So we're talking like you know. Oh, more more than 25 years now and so the thing that got me is as i was going particularly when i would start going downhill it moves a lot faster than i remember at least it feels a lot faster <laughs> he's zooming that gravity's so taking over to, uh, yeah i'm getting it not to me this is also quite a heavier bike than normal um you know part of it you know to hold it's a steel frame to sort of hold the girth so once it gets going fortunately they have heavy duty brakes on there so i'm i'm comfortable with that but it's taking me a lot more uh, time to get used to it than I expected. Hmm. Um, but uh, all in all, I mean, it's I haven't had any issues. Everything. So you know, how many times have you taken this steed out of its stable? 
Um, four or five now. Oh, okay. What do you do? Like a half hour, an hour, or something like that? Just get up. Well, and... I mean, at this point, I'm just going. You know, I'm I'm trying to go a little bit longer each time, or a little bit further. Um, yeah, I think uh, so about a half half hour, thirty five minutes is about as long as I've been out so far. Do you wear bike shorts when you ride it? I do not. <laughs> I don't pants, own any bike pants. shorts. Yeah. I don't. I, Come on, Abby needs to see it. Hey, so, oh wow! Uh, well, you see, see people. It, the, the the whole road bike thing is a huge thing out here, and you see all these fools, these these rich, entitled looking, you know, guys that are, and they're all about like five seven and about one hundred thirty pounds. They 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 just ride half in the middle of the street. Yeah. Don't bother to try to get out of the way, but they all have to be on their bikes. With their full spandex outfits that looks like they're endorsed <laughs> yeah. on some like you know tour to jackass or something. <laughs> now, um, Bill, Bill, as a big man, and I am too. You know, and I know, on certain things when you sit on them, you can hear them creak, move. You're like, this ain't gonna last. <laughs> so on this bike, do you feel that, or does it feel pretty sturdy? And you feel this is gonna last me quite a few years. So far, I feel pretty good about it. I haven't had any issues. It doesn't feel rickety. It feels very solid. Um, We'll see how it goes over time. I'm I'm more worried about the long term effect on the tires and wheels. I mean, I, I would expect I'll probably go through inner tubes a little bit more often than the average person. But I'm also not. Ta- I mean, it's more of like a mountain bikey kind of thing than. But I don't intend to do anything other than just to ride it on flat land. So, I mean, as far as I'm just looking to be able to get on the trail back behind my house and maybe go up to the trout farm and back. You know, I'm not. I'm not looking to do anything crazy, and There's I figure if I ever get to the hey, he's got a trout farm well, back. If there? you walk the nature trail, I found it the one time. Oh, like, okay. It's like everyone's fishing there. I was like, like, "Wow, that's weird." Like, trout B- farm. B just drops trout farm. Real quick. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Trout's a trout. Realistically, <laughs> if I ever get to the point where I would start doing more of the hardcore stuff, I imagine I will have been. I it would be after I dropped enough, I could get on a normal bike anyway. Yeah. So, not to mention, this is a pretty damn heavy bike. Um, it, it'd be quite a, quite a chore to try to take it How'd out. How'd you get it. it home? Shove it in the back of the caddy? Well, no. Well, I had it delivered um, well, through Amazon, and then I... Oh. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It, it, I can't... No, no. See, it's too heavy, because I was going to get one of those things that we put on the back trunk to carry the bike, and the, the guy told me that it was too heavy, and if I did that, I'd ruin the trunk. So the only way I'd be able to do it is if there was a hitch. So we ended up uh, using my in-laws SUV to go pick it up. But <laughs> those bikes so big back. and heavy, he needs a trailer hitch. Uh, yeah, dude, he's got. Well, so, no, you know how you can have your, uh, some yeah, of the yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking like the four bike holder uh, out of the back tailgate. There's also thing. something that just sort of strap and connect to the trunk. And he said that the the weight of the bike would be too much for the trunk. How much do you think this bike weighs when you try to lift it? I want to say it's like forty pounds. How much is an average bike? I don't know. I don't know. Well, the guy, the guy at the at the bike shop was trying to show me that I was stupid, because he pointed out another one with those big fat tires, that, and he was like, "Well, feel how this is. It's half the weight." He's like, "Why didn't you get something like this?" And I'm like, "Well, how much was that?" Oh, it's sixteen hundred dollars. I'm like, "Well, that's why." <laughs> yeah, that's it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if uh, I better be pretty damn sure I'm going to do this on a regular basis before I even consider to justify that kind of, that kind of coin. Yeah. yeah, I think so, you're better off doing what you did. Yeah, yeah buying a cheap. I'll ride. ride and, and the best part about this is it's cheap enough, and there's there enough in demand that if it turns out that I either don't continue to do it or whatever, I can always sell it and probably get my money back. I told you I gave you fifty bucks for it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you Standing also offer. You also said the price would go down by what five bucks every month. Or <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So have you named your steed? No, it's just a bike, man. Why would I name it? Name it Silver. You can say Hi Ho Silver. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You named every car you've ever had. Why? What you no, I, I didn't really name most of the cars. What the Poons thing? I, that was Charles. That wasn't me. Oh, all right. Anyway, so the mongoose, Miles, fat tire bicycle, built for fat guys, uh, heavy Seems bike, like a good bike, and uh, but swap out the seat or you'll it'll be a junk crusher. <laughs> All right, so this week we got some new shows coming up, and I, I'm excited about two of them, uh, but I'm probably in the minority here. So first up is, like I told we were talking about earlier, Transformers War of Cybertron comes out this Friday. It looks like Generation 1. Looks great. Uh, I'm all in. Yes, on Transformer War of Cybertron, Charles. Uh, I'll definitely check it out with you, and then we'll have something to discuss as we all kind of watch that. I'll definitely check it out for sure. And Bill? No. <laughs> now Umbrella Academy also comes out, so I'll be uh, my time will be split. I probably won't get all of Umbrella Academy done. Uh, season two for that. Both of them coming out at the end of the month. 
Uh, I'm a big yes on that one too, Charles. I watched. I try to watch season one of this. I know you're kind of you're into it. I, it's not for me. Uh, I don't yeah. like it. I don't like Umbrella Academy. Yeah, it's a quirky X Men almost. And Bill, do you, anything on that one? Probably not. This next one was a big movie for all the teenagers. They love this movie. My daughter watched it. Kissing Booth Two is the sequel to the first one. I, I don't know what it's about. It sounds terrible. I'm a no. It's a Holly movie, so no. I didn't know what Kissing Booth One was, let alone the sequel. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what uh, this if is. Your daughter was in the 14 yeah, years old. Yeah, I might know it. Board. Maybe Heather does. I never even heard of it. I don't yeah. know what that is. Bill, are you ready to kiss in the booth <laughs> for a second time? That's really one of those movies that you don't need to do anything other than read the name to know you're never going to watch it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, no. And this next one, I can't believe this show's been on eight seasons. Chris Lee knows best. It's like a USA show. It's this it? USA reality it's like show. This gay this guy gay. who's married. Yeah, right? he's blonde and gay, but he has a family. Yeah. Season eight. I'm a no. I always saw the advertisements when I was watching wrestling for this show. Yeah. I, and I always go, who's watching this? Someone that's made eight seasons. So I'm, and I'm with you. I Like a gay guy who's married and never watched one episode of it. Couldn't <laughs> yeah. tell you. I don't know nothing about it. And Bill? Yeah, I don't understand how this ever got on the, on the air in the first place. Never mind made eight seasons. Yeah, so that's terrible. And then on the sci-fi networks, we have a sci-fi sighting. Wyona Earp, season four, uh, she's a uh, descendant of Wyatt Earp somehow. Never watched the show. I haven't watched any season, so I'm a big no. I'll tell you this. If it's not Battlestar Galactica sci-fi, I'm not yeah. watching any junk on that. What is the Expanse one sucks? Yeah, and all, sucks uh, yeah. all sci-fi stuff is terrible. So Battlestar Galactica was the one random, <laughs> one random show that was great. Yeah. No. And Bill? Any chance on why? Well, or... first off, sci-fi automatically disqualifies me. But is it possible there's actually a worse Winona than Winona Judd? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Uh, now there is something on sci-fi that I, I missed. I'm going to watch it. They, they did a documentary on Todd McFarlane, the creator of Spawn, his history and stuff. So that's more for the comic book nerd. I am going to watch it. I just missed it this week. And also this week, I didn't put it on there because we've talked about it before. The Muppets on Disney Plus come back. I'll check that yeah, out. Yeah, so the Muppets tonight. All right, Charles, what's happening in the world of Punch You in the Face? Yeah, so uh, it was kind of a bigger weekend for me with this. So they had the last uh, Fight Island uh, UFC fight night happen this past weekend. Why is it the last? They're, they're moving back to Vegas. Oh. It's, they're just, they're, they do that. They kind of take residency for a few weeks, and then they move on to something else. So... Okay. Uh, it was a pretty good fight. Robert Whitaker defeated Darren Till in in uh, decision. This was a pretty good. They, they were beating the piss out of each other. A very entertaining fight. The other thing that was crazy to me is Nogueira fought Shogun Hua again. Now these th- this is the third fight between these two individuals. Their first fight took place in two thousand and five. So you could imagine how long in the tooth these two guys are. A lot of split decisions during all this. So that one was a split. A lot of split stuff happening on this particular fight night, but it was nonetheless it was a pretty entertaining card. Um, this next weekend, August first, they're going to go back to the UFC Apex in Vegas. So they're they're leaving Fight Island behind, and they're going to go on to that. No real din- or no real anything going on on that fight card, but nonetheless they're going to start moving the operation back that way. You've got the UFC, you got Stipe Miocic, uh, Daniel Cormier three happening mid month, so that'll be kind of starting there Mm. the other big thing too is i try to give you guys a heads up there was a bare knuckle fighting that happened on friday i don't know how i didn't write that down yeah i don't know how (laughs) you and me are slacking on your bare knucks uh that was for free on facebook live and on youtube i watched it through youtube on the tv it was kind of nice it was good that it was free a bunch of hillbillies beating the shit out again can't tell you enough good things about that. Um, the big thing was they 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 decided a belt. They got uh, this Isaac Valley flag, who you would recognize from a couple other of their events they've had. Mm. He got he got beaten under a minute to this Luis Palomino guy. He beat the shit out of him real quick and oh, won a wow. belt. Their super welterweight belt was uh, decided. The other big thing too, and this goes to show you, I'm not the only idiot watching this because at one point on YouTube. I was there with 45,000 other people that were watching that YouTube stream. Mm. DAZN, who I'm sure BV recognizes, the Canelo Alvarez fights are on there and all that kind of stuff, is going to be the exclusive streaming partner for BKFC going forward. So you're only going to be able to get on DAZN, not the Fight TV app. And what do they charge? 
I'm sure it's going to be way more because that's what they do. So, oh, right. <laughs> so, so Baronex is on the come up then, right? Yeah, it, see, it would appear to me to be, and that's what this this event took place in Oxford, Mississippi. They were supposed to be social distancing, but they had like a 15 percent of their crowd that was there. Mm. So it was entertaining. I love bare knuckle. Can't get enough of it. Idiots breaking their faces. <laughs> was it on Old Miss's campus? It was right near it. It was right uh-huh. there because they kept showing like a water tower that had the old Miss logo on it and stuff. So I don't believe it was on the campus, but a convention center. It's right the near same by. area they do the cockfighting. They just replaced it with humans. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't know, I love it. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Bare Nux was back. Uh, Forty-five thousand people in the country are excited. Charles was one of them. <laughs> yeah, I did. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the news. What's new and exciting? Now, Charles is waiting for the death of theaters, and he may be getting closer to it. <laughs> uh, the big movie that was going to open theaters and bring everyone back to the theater. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan's. Denzel Washington's kid. Yes. I don't know David what it's truly Washington, about. His what's is? his name? Or what's the, uh, what's the premise? Tenant of is what it is. It seems like they are kind of like special agents of some sort that can control time somehow. Oh. It's a, all about a time manipulation and stuff, it seems, anyways. Maybe. Well, that's the thing. There's a big mystery behind it, so everyone oh. wants to go to the theater and see it. Cause the it's intrigue. Christopher Nolan. And, yeah. uh, but it's been delayed indefinitely by Warner Brothers. They said, no, we're not going to release it now. So theaters are probably like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, none of them are open to show it, right? Well, I mean, they were banking on this one. But they were going to come out, and then the, 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 everything's going to get lifted. And we're all going to be happy and watch Christmas yeah, movies. Yeah, the coronavirus we're socially is still riddling the south. Socially distanced in theaters, watching Christopher Nolan movies, God damn it! That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> Didn't happen. It's another nail in the uh, old proverbial yeah. coffin. And then the, the other thing, too, is Disney delayed Mulan and like four yeah, different yeah, other yeah. movies. And it's crazy. So now no July movies. They were supposed to be opening the last week of July just at the NBA. And that ain't going to happen. So who knows now? The theaters are dying more and more. Charles is celebrating Steve's crack. <laughs> Don't say that, Steve. Uh, I know. Next up, this is in Bill's world right here. He's excited. He's got a hard on for this one. Mike Tyson is back to fight Roy Jones Jr. in an exhibition pay-per-view. Eight rounds. Mike Tyson's 54. Roy Jones is 51. Roy Jones Jr. never really stopped fighting. He was yeah. still kind of fighting a lot. And stuff, yeah, so, so and the, I guess Mike Tyson's starting this Legends League thing where it'll be more than boxing. You can, oh. If you are an ex-athlete who feels steals, you have one more game in you. Mike Tyson is going to provide you a way to, oh, to provide it. Okay. That's the whole thing behind this, and this is why they're doing it. And I, and the, also Logan Paul, or Paul Logan. Yeah, you keep saying that. I don't know who that he is. He is a YouTube star. He had a boxing event against another YouTube star on YouTube that did great. Oh. So now he's going to fight uh, an NBA player. I think Nate something. I can't remember his name. Nate Robinson. That sounds familiar. Nate Robinson. Yeah, that's yeah. like five foot seven. He won the dunk contest a couple times. Yeah, so they're going to have a celebrity boxing match on the same card. They're also going to have musical acts. He's mm. he's he's WrestleMania. Just throwing yeah, everything at the window. So. I was talking to Charles, you guys, how much were either one of you interested in paying for for this pay-per-view? I'm all in at 50, 55 bucks. I'll buy it for 50, 55. Bill? Uh, you know, yeah, sadly, I'd probably pay to watch it too. The problem, though, is that Roy Jones may seriously get hurt here. I mean, yeah, he, he was getting, the end of his, the end of the relevant part of his career, he was getting knocked out on a regular basis against 175-pound guys. And some of them towards the end weren't particularly all that good. And from what I've seen in the, the, the training videos with Tyson, he's about as quick as he's been in 20 years. <laughs> and, I can't wait. I I'm going up to $75. Yeah. I for that. I saw, I saw, to watch Ray Jones get blown <laughs> out, though. Max Kellerman, and he's talking about, asking, well, how much of this is going to be a, an exhibition and how much of this is you're going to be Mike Tyson the way Mike Tyson is? And he's like, I'm always Mike Tyson. <laughs> Roy <laughs> Jones had better get him off the mat. Right? Bicycle the entire fight because if Tyson hits him, he might actually like yeah he, he might seriously hurt him. BB selling me on this. I'm gonna be honest. I know, with you. I'm all well, in. Yeah. I don't use... like Roy Jones' chances. <laughs> yeah. Bill, they're supposed to use bigger gloves. Does that make a difference? They're 12 ounce gloves. I said what? 12 mean. ounce. Yeah. Um. Well, I think heavyweights typically use 10, eight or 10. <laughs> so so it's not that gonna different. save his life. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm um, in. I'm in. I'm all in. Yeah, all right, gentlemen. I'm gonna write this right now. We'll be there well, in September. Jones is probably still quicker, and and, and obviously he's was That's the so better good. overall athlete. But no, his chin was never. 
the thing is, is as soon as he slowed down enough, people could hit him. He lost a lot. Mm, I, Tyson, I mean, even towards the end of his thing, could take punches. He he hits him with one good left hook. It, it's done. I mean, like concussion out on the, on his feet. You know, d- probably knocked out before he hits the ground. Uh, yeah, this is going to be one of those train wrecks that I'll probably still pay to watch. I'm definitely going to do I definitely. You don't have to. We'll all cut in on it, dude. We're all in on all this right. for sure. BV sold me 110% on this. <laughs> well, that's what, September 12th? No, 100 bucks three ways. Yeah. Oh, maybe, three, yeah. 33 maybe bucks. Just, how much you willing to pay? $33. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'll bring the Joe Rito. <laughs> yes. yeah, so there you go. Mike Tyson. Now, this league, Legends League, I was talking to Bill about this earlier in the week. So imagine you got play, people like T.O. and Chad Johnson who thinks they got one more game in them. Mm-hmm. So you set up like a seven-on-seven. Seven. You, you couldn't do full hitting or anything. Would you be interesting to watch something like that? Not really. They bring Montana back and Rice back. Not and, really. Or Marino one I more time. I don't need to see like the senior PGA Tour of yeah, the NFL. No, no. I don't know. I told Bill I'd watch it for free on TV when nothing else is on. Yeah, I'm not paying pay-per-view. Yeah. The only thing pay per view would probably be the boxers, right? Yeah, because after this they're going to probably set up Tyson and. I would watch like aging UFC people and stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah, you might might, uh, like BB just totally stoked my fire. If I can watch someone get dropped hard, I'm definitely kind of into that. I'll be honest with you. So, but the the Legends League is supposed to be for any other sport. Feels that they have like. Would you watch McEnroe versus Agassi one last uh, nah, again? Or? Nah, tennis has never been my thing. Yeah, there's yes. already a senior circuit for tennis too, and so. there's already a senior circuit for basketball. Because what's it? The three on three. three. Yeah. 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 So maybe it won't yeah. go that far, but well, we'll see. I, get his point, I guess is what I yeah. would say. Do you watch? I guess I would ask you. Do you watch? I think it's usually around the Super Bowl time. They have those sort of legends and superstars playing seven seven on seven flag football. No. You know, Super Bowl weekend. I don't watch that. I don't know why I'd watch. Good point. You know, just point. because they bring out a bigger name has been. Yeah, that's true. So I guess that I guess boxing and UFC guys would be the only two that could draw. Yeah. Everybody else would be like, yeah, I don't care about these. guys. You want to see guys. people get really hurt? <laughs> I gotta do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think BB's on to something. So there we go. So Mike Tyson's back. We'll see how much they charge for it. It'd be interesting. I mean, if they charge a hundred for McGregor and and. Uh, Floyd, you could Michael. make the argument those are two guys in their prime, though. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking Mayweather, fifty nine ninety nine. Floyd. What was that? Say Floyd? Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Somebody I got you. I got Floyd. Yeah, I don't know. Let's we'll see. All right. So now we touched on this a little bit earlier. Microsoft has stopped selling the one year Xbox Live cards, so they've cut, totally discontinued them. They can sell out what they have left. A lot of people online suspect it's because they're going to bundle Game Pass and Xbox Live all together. And they already do, right? Isn't that the way the Game Pass kind of is sold? Yeah, yeah. Is that way? Is like yeah, you get the it's Xbox. like a dollar. So if you buy the Game Pass, you can add that live for a dollar, or you buy. A lot. I don't yeah. know. It's vice versa. They have like a if you're a first time. It's a very up. mediocre difference between. Yeah, so I, a lot of people think Xbox Live is just gonna go away. It's all just gonna be that this one service. I don't know why. If you have Xbox Live, you don't have the Game Pass side of it. Yeah, it's a great value. So I think that's what's gonna happen. And it looks like they're really pimping this Game Pass. This is their Netflix, I think. And this is what they want yeah. going forward. And that's why they bought all those studios to just keep pumping games into it. Uh, so they're, they're taking the Netflix approach. Let's see if it works for them. All right. So next, I like to put these on here because Charles loves alternative foods. Yeah. And KFC is making lab made chicken. Now, these aren't vegetarian. It's meat they make in a lab. Yeah, I'll try so it. So the gelatinous goo gets turned into I'll a nugget that shit. and it's sold to you. Give me that shit. I'll try You're going to eat the lab I, chicken. In a heartbeat, I would eat the lab-grown chicken. I, you're talking to someone who bought a case of Soylent and stuff like that. So, like, <laughs> I'm down with it, dude, for sure. Yeah, Bill, do the shit. mutant lab-grown chicken nuggets sound good to you? How? I mean, how are they going <laughs> so to be eating? What? Yeah, how are they going to be any worse quality than what we're probably already eating with KFC? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, or the artificial it. chickens inside the chicken McNuggets yeah, and McDonald's. Sounds probably safer. Yeah. So there we go. Lab made chicken. I don't know where. I didn't read the whole article. Maybe I should have. Uh, but every time KFC has these weird, quirky things, it's like in one little area of the country yeah. and only available for 10 minutes, which is kind of annoying. But And all I know is if COVID don't end, you're gonna wait ten hours in the drive-through because every drive-through is 110 oh, minutes. Man, Jesus, that... Steve, what do you what do you got to be? You're in such a hurry. I got places to be to go work on plumbing. Yeah, <laughs> you got nowhere to go. I gotta go lift the lawnmower out of someone's trunk. Yeah. 
All right. Now, Charles, you love the, the uh, Parks and Rec uh, Zoom TV reunion. I thought it was really bad. <laughs> well, I don't know if you I know all those characters. I do. But... Now, 30 Rock's done one. Oh, A couple they? others have done one. And now, I didn't even watch this show. Happy Endings? I don't even know what that show is. I don't know what that is. is. I don't know what that is. It was on Fox, I believe. I, I watched it. Bill, did you like the show? or? It was okay. Wasn't anything special. So basically, Sounds like a ringing endorsement. Yeah, any show it was okay. With a bunch of actors sitting around doing nothing for COVID, they're like, hey, let's get together and do a Zoom yeah, show. Yeah, it's so stupid. So they're having another one. I, I want to ask the networks right now, please stop. Nobody yeah. likes these things. They're terrible. Parks and Rec tried. It just wasn't good. Terrible. Stop doing them. Uh, yeah, this this was like a younger people friends knockoff kind of thing in a way. Uh, it sounds terrible already. My, no wonder me and Charles never watched. Charles and I never yeah. watched it. Oh man! Now here's another one too. HBO Max. We all got a free sample of it there for a while. Whatever. HBO is owned by Time Warner, who owns what is their money maker? Harry Potter. Well, Harry Potter's leaving the service, so I'm not quite sure. I don't, I don't know how. And Heather and I have had these conversations before. Like, I feel like a lot of people. Streaming is so new that they don't understand and they didn't sign the rights properly. Like, so in other words, they probably already promised them to a different service and then, oh shit, we'll come up with our own thing later. But yeah. then, oh wait, we still no. got to honor and that contract. contract. Yeah. yeah, it's a really weird thing because like stuff's kind of always shifting and coming and but going. But it seems to be doing a lot more with HBO Max than most I of them. Don't know. And you think Harry Potter and and the DC superhero should be a mainstay on there, right? I don't know. Especially since they're owned by Yeah, them. but you're talking to someone. I still haven't wa- gone. Have you gone back and watched the 4K Star Wars on Disney Plus? Uh, That's a no, is no. what you're trying to say. So like, no. So it was on think, TBS the other yeah, day. But so do you, you think the Harry Potter fans are watching these on HBO Max? Probably I, I, not. Yeah, probably not. I don't know, but it's still something you should, you should have. I get your point, but I don't know. Like, and I, as uh, let me take a, a, a survey around the room: Has anybody watched or cared about Peacock yet? <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> Nobody watching the Peacock. No, I haven't watched. Yeah, it me all. either. I don't know. Heather's just... way into it because there's a, a reunion or a new Psych on there, and she's all about Psych. And I'm like, yeah, it's a Psych movie or something. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Shit, that show sucked. So, uh, line breaking, my nose kind of messed up. But uh, now here's an interesting one. On Twitch, the U.S. Army was giving away an Xbox Elite controller. You could sign up. But the problem was when you clicked the link, it was just a recruitment form for the U.S. Army. Oh, there was no that's shady yeah, shit. Yeah, so Twitch got mad at him and penalized him for a while. I mean, the Army's got to recruit, right? <laughs> right? They got to find they immediately were just looking for Twitch guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're in shape. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I want defending the country. A bunch of guys sitting around watching Twitch. <laughs> That'll work. Jeez. So I thought that was a funny one. Uh, so they're trying to get that young... Uh, that young demographic, but uh, trying some shady thing. Yeah, it's a controller. Sign these for. <laughs> yeah, <I'm real. laughs> Sign, like, and then they pull the paper back, and it's something else. Yeah, it's like you like Call of Duty. Want to do it live? Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, I That's thought that crazy. was funny. So Twitch has cracked down and removed most of the army uh, contest forms on there. Uh, that's for the news. So, well, who's got a rant? Who's gonna? Well, I have a rant. It's not really even a rant. It's more of China wins again. <laughs> so Steve at one point talked about how on Wish dot com he bought some Ninja Turtles, and they were the most Dude, busted they ass were Ninja special Turtles. Needs Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I so still regret not bringing them in. Back when COVID started. I wanted to get, I'm still, as you hear me every week, I kind of keep adding to my little home gym and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I want to get some battle ropes. I think that'd be kind of fun to have some battle ropes. That's supposed to be a battle rope? Do, hold on. <laughs> this is supposed to be a one and a half inch, 10 foot long rope. It showed up and Heather came downstairs just cracking up. <laughs> First of all, I ordered this in the beginning of May, maybe? At yeah, it the, takes like two months to get here. From China. Like, it literally came from China. And I'll show you after the show, my picture, my email. It looks like a battle rope. And I'm like, okay, cool, for 20 bucks. Bill, can like, you see this rope right now? Yeah, it's the worst. It's literally it looks, like a canvas. It looks like a bad regular jump rope. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> Dude, it showed up and Heather just cracked up. So I was like, man, fuck this. I'm going to go online company is just gone whoever <laughs> sold it to me you can't even like look oh. up or nothing i'm like you assholes man so china won again i got me a really <laughs> high-end battle rope <laughs> like, what the? 
I was like, are you serious, man? God damn it's, China. Uh, come to China. Uh, so, I don't know. You remember on the podcast where I told you, uh, on Wish.com, you could see a lot of Legos and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Knock off Legos. Mm-hmm. When I told you the people making them got busted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. this was recently in the news. Also on Wish.com, you'll see a lot of Transformers. Like, I've almost clicked yes on something oh. where they had the Constructicons, and they're only yeah. 30 bucks. A, there's a company in China who's been replicating all them. They just got arrested. Wow. They, I saw pictures of the whole warehouse. They had like just boxes of these things Jesus. everywhere. So and they said they said one of the main suppliers they supplied on Wish.com and a couple other websites oh, too. Man. So Some it'd be of hard to get your Chinese retailers need to vet this shit. This <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> and this was like I said, this this hit me right when COVID started because you couldn't. And and Gabe was on the show and discussed it. The exercise equipment just dried up so insanely fast. But then I was like, oh, a 10 foot rope would be kind of cool to have. And like downstairs getting after it. Then this thing showed up. I was like, goddamn China. That's funny. Yeah. I thought you bought a weighted jump rope and that's what showed up. No, I bought a battle rope. (laughs) That's what I got. Well, I guess you could technically tie it to a ground. (laughs) Yeah, technically. Not much of a workout. Yeah. Woo, uh, I'm feeling pretty pumped. It's feel the burn, (laughs) right? I was like, goddamn China. (laughs) So, Bill, China virus. Uh, Are you eating fresh at Subway? What's happening at Subway? No, I'm not. So. First, I think this is a theme. So I, I, I've already read in the past that Subway has been struggling mightily, and this is before COVID even. This is and like I, overexpansion. Aren't they like the textbook of like overexpansion yeah, and stuff like that? I, I yeah. think so. I, but I can the understand in a lot of ways now why why they're, oh, they're having the issues down, they are and, and, and why, they don't, uh, why they don't stay in business. And frankly, I, I don't really care at this point. I kind of hope they all go out of business. Wow. Um, so well, no. So I, I'm sure you've all seen the commercials about the uh, promotion that Subway has had nationally, which is the, you know, if you buy at least two footlongs, they're five dollars each. Standard kind of you know Subway promotion. So a few weeks back, I decided, all right, well, I'm gonna have Subway for lunch. Now there are four. You were getting two footlongs for your lunch. Well, no, I, I respect that order. <laughs> um, but so so there are four Subways within a few miles of me. All right. One of them has shut down temporarily, I guess, through the rest of COVID. So I went to one and the, the, the next closest one and walk in and they say, oh, yeah, no, we're not participating in the uh, in the promotion. So I've never I've always point, seen that fine print. I've never actually been somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at this point, I'd already ordered the subs and they were made in front of me. So I reluctantly just paid for it. whatnot. So. About a week and a half later, I decide I want Subway for <laughs> lunch. He's a lot of Subway. Well, no, I'm trying. Nice well, you know, I figure if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go get something, it's it's a it's a it can be a healthier option. So, um, so I go to a different one. I walk in. Oh no! Well, sorry, we are, we're not we're not doing the promotion. So I just I, I go on like a little bit of a rant. I'm like, well, it's kind of funny why how you're all going out of business. This makes sense. Why? What's the point of even having the promotion if you know? No one's going to going to participate. Wow. I go to a different one because it was only about a mile and a half away. Same thing. So wow. four subways near me. None of them are not participating. Not participating. <laughs> not participate. Wow. I actually sent an email to, to Subway Corporate complaining wow. about it. <laughs> Bill's really so pissed. Wow. Recently, they, recently they changed their promotion. It's now if you do it on on the app or on the, or online. Wow. So I, of course, I also wasn't paying attention to the little fine print again. I said, oh, great. I'll download the app. I'll just pay for it on the app and pick it up. No, you can't do that. You order it to the store. If they're not participating, you don't get the promotion. So <laughs> so basically, <laughs> Subway, a loophole. <laughs> Subway, both as a franchise model and as a corporation, can fuck themselves straight up the ass with a broken <laughs> plunger handle. I will not ever freaking buy Subway again. Wow. They Sounds like you ate a lot. I <laughs> yeah, I know. Time for Mr. Money. What is the Jersey point Mike? of having these national promotions if no one is going to freaking participate in them? Yeah, that's crazy. And these stupid ass franchisees apparently don't have any basic understanding of economics and that you're not busy in the first place. Have you thought maybe that it's the promotion that gets people in the door? And maybe you might want to be part of it because a lot of sales at a slightly lower margin of profit is a lot better than a 
maybe a couple here and there, but not much else at your freaking initial $2 a freaking sub. Go fuck yourself, Subway. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I know this much from someone who did a stretch of work at Burger King's back in the day. When they used to put them fucking Whoppers on sale, dude, I never made so many goddamn Whoppers in my <laughs> life. So I get these franchisees sometimes can't harbor that loss leader that BV's describing as like those certain foot longs and stuff like that. I just I don't think I've ever experienced where they just said we don't participate though. <laughs> yeah, I've never that's seen crazy. that. Like, that's, that's pretty, pretty fun. Nice. So Bill, you're, you're you're pissed off of So now, what would be your choice sub of replacement? Your uh, company, I should say. Well, I mean, if I were if I were still in Michigan, I'd just go to Tubby's because it's tasty. Well, in Chicago um, though. In Chicago, I yeah, I, I would probably go to Jersey Mike's. I like Jersey Mike's a so, lot. Yeah. I like it a lot too. No Jimmy Johns. I don't. I've, no Jimmy John's for you guys. I, I, I do don't, not like Jimmy John's at all. I don't go to Jimmy John's at all because he's a psycho. Oh, yeah. He's like yeah, a I trophy like hunter psycho. psycho. I'm sure that's why. But BV is that why you guys don't go there either? No, no, no. A- a- Abby oh. will order it. I just don't like. Abby it. will miss this animal lover will buy Jimmy John's. I don't think she. Yeah, it's kind of funny anymore. how that works sometimes. Oh wow. Um, oh. Gosh, yeah. Um, I just don't like the subs. How much calories you burn in swinging that battle Woo! over? <laughs> My forearms are burning. Yeah, so. oh, Jesus. Maybe you can do that with just one arm. Oh, I tried yeah. the pinky battle ropes. That's what these are. They're pinky battle ropes. <laughs> They're made for action figures. Man, my fingers are strong. Fucking China. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Look at why Subway screwed BV over. And Charles <laughs> got quality products from China. <laughs> oh, I wish I would have brought those special needs turtles over. Yeah. yeah dude, I should have. I screwed thing. up. I just threw right the trash. Like, what is this? It's <laughs> one of those things. I was like, oh, man. Like, this is going to take a while, but it's fine. When they show I have another them. one, though. I got burned on. And I should have known better. But uh, those gamer chairs or whatever, I know they're uncomfortable or whatever, but there's the site. You still, you still rocking your gamer chair, BV? No, I bought another chair a long time ago. Oh. It's just sitting down on the This site right. had them for 10 oh. bucks. I was like, $10 <laughs> for an office? <laughs> I was like, 10 bucks. I fucking bought two of them. It was like $10. I said, 30 bucks total. I was like, what the fuck? What that? Yeah, oh, the, the website disappeared. Oh, I yeah, dude, what are you doing? I was out 30 bucks. I was dumb. I should have done that. <laughs> As well as well as you're sitting there like, you know, even if the chairs suck, they're still taking <laughs> yeah. What were like, you saying, BV? I was asking if that was one of those janky ones that just sit on the floor directly. No, no. Uh, it was like uh, ones that look like race car seats. Uh, the, the Recaro. Yeah, yeah whatever. should have known better. But You got them for 10 bucks a piece? Well, no, they never showed up. They got my $10. <laughs> yeah, they they just took the, and you then get the website suckers at 10 bucks a piece. Yeah, you make and then a the lot website of money. disappeared a month later. So. That's why, like I said, like now when I go on like eBay and stuff, I check US only. I won't deal in like China things uh, and all that kind of stuff. Because I had a hell of a time getting a USB-C, the monitor thing for the BV monitor. Yeah. I had to, like, file a complaint with eBay on one company and everything. I was like, dude, this is crazy. I've, I've bought a couple things from China from eBay, uh, but you just can't be in a hurry. That's got, the thing. I got a, with that, I was like, oh, okay. I got a music box for Beauty and the Beast for Michelle, like a jewelry music box. And... Uh, it took two and a half months to yeah, get it. Crazy. And they came, you ever notice when it comes to China, it's in the that weird package with the letter. Dude. Yeah, you're it's like, like oh. how much coronavirus is on this thing? Like, you get like the, the weird check your tracker thing. It's like a weird like laser ship. Yeah, what? yeah. What and then this? it goes through one city. Yeah. And then another. It's like, what? What is going Waiting on? on customs. You're like, oh, okay. I'm probably, oh, okay, so the wish cat kind of screwed me. The red game chair screwed me. I'm three for two on ordering oh, overseas, okay. so not too bad, but. Have you I've seen those been. ads for that personal air conditioner? It's a little cubey oh. looking thing. Yeah. Did you order it's that? Another Chinese? Thing. No, I, I, I almost did. <laughs> but then I, but I, I check reviews and I kept asking, why does every review look like a, uh, look like a promotion instead of just a review? And it turns out they have a bunch of people that are posting these these little fake you know, reviews, these, uh, reviews yeah. that are actually just yeah. the promotional stuff people are shady man and like, i was yeah. yeah i was thinking it's 89.99 right i'm like i have a pretty good idea that if i order this i'm not even going to get a product never mind anyone that works yeah, that it. Suck, dude. so i bailed i yeah I, I backed off and didn't buy it but all right so now are you going to be here next week because you said your work schedule is changing a little bit yeah i don't know what's going on at work and stuff like that we might end up having to alter the day i was thinking maybe saturday after i get off work we could record all or right. something like i that. won't be here saturday <laughs> i'll be at a wedding in 
So, no, sure. we'll figure it out. But I'm saying, like, a, I just wanted to give you a heads up going forward because, like I said, the problem is the industry I work in is not getting any better. Yeah, <laughs> Neither is the country, but the, my industry specifically is not getting any better. So, um, with that federal money ending, uh, people are jockeying for schedule positions and stuff like uh, that. So, someone has enough time to bump you. Yeah, two people are above me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did not know that. All right, so we'll, we'll keep everyone informed there uh, for our millions upon millions. Yes. Of sure I will have a full us. report about Traverse City, Charlevoix, and Boyne yeah, Mountain. I forgot that was next I'm week. Ha- I'm heading out Thursday. When do you leave out Thursday? Thursday, be back Sunday, probably before the podcast. All so right. if we have it on Sunday, I'll be back, or we can do it Monday either way. Uh, so we'll be there. Uh, yeah, we'll I'll let you know out. how that goes. Uh, and Bill, anything you want to promote or anything? Anything you want to pimp? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> you got plugs? You got any yeah, plugs? Yeah, you need BP oil? You need the people to go buy that <laughs> gas station? Go buy gas at your local BP today. There you go. I'm trying to promote that for you. All right. So until next week, we uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> well, of course, over it. I'm over it. You can see, catch us on Google Play, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, anywhere you can hear a podcast. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Twitch, YouTube. <laughs> you can see the video. We're all out there now. We got handy little new graphics. Yeah. You can see my little Mike Tyson in the corner. Yeah. Charles got a uh, fist in the corner. And of course, you can see Pudge in live and I. Oh, Bill! Before we go, are you going to get a little cart to put Pudge on the back of your car or in the back of your bike? You know those little carts with wheels. Oh, and put trailers! Down? Yeah, you're probably. Get... No, 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 we are. We already bought a stroller to walk her in, so no, that's enough. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Well, good enough. <laughs> so, all right. Until next week, this is Steve and Charles. We'll check you next time.